Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Create Your Label. Once again, scheduled impromptu, out of the blue, clear blue sky, you don't know. And here we are again with another episode. Welcome, everybody. How you feeling tonight, Vic? Like I said, let me look at the clock here. It's about 1.30 in the morning. We thought we would be done about three hours ago. We were supposed to be. We were supposed to be. Right. Well, this is going to be an interesting uh, broadcast today, and it's going to really set up a number of the future broadcasts because we're going to be focusing on the individual items. But it's really entitled, The Top Five Mistakes That Indie Music Artists Make. The Top Five Mistakes That Indie Music Artists Make. So, wow. Vic, tell me how you came. Vic, this is actually Vic's suggestion. So, Vic, tell me how you came across this and what gave you the idea for this. We were actually talking. You know, I always say you back up into something. Mario and I, we always talk about why people need to do a lot more as they're coming in contact with people. Social media is just not applications on the computer. Social media is still the traditional take value in the people you come in contact with because they are they can be social media enthusiasts. And they can follow you and have their people follow you. So we were talking about the do's and don'ts. We have people that come on the show and then you don't see no more. You don't hear no more. Well, we just came off of something that was wonderful. We had a group called After Hours that was on the show. Right. You remember them, right? right? You enjoyed them. Excellent. Went to see them perform. They reached out. They did all the things to stay proactive, more so than being on the show, your show, Morning Coffee which, of course, they appreciate, and they think they're a wonderful fan, of course, of, of them. They, they love you on that. But the part I got from them is that they have a social media integration, a, a business platform, and they just carried it through from the time they shook our hand, came on the show, to even being more proactive after. And so to me, I think those type of techniques work in some ways where you have to be able to think like an entrepreneur. And I think it made me come across by searching what I thought was some of the faux pas of people who make mistakes and what are the traditional mistakes they make. Hence, you already alluded to the five mistakes. And I, I just decided to say which one rings in your ear the most, but maybe we should list all five first just to say it for the group or the fans and our followers. Now, I can read them all, but if you want, it's up to you, man. All right, why don't you read them off? Okay. First one, I love this one, you guys. First one, waiting for a record label to discover you. <laughs> okay. I think that was just well, unbelievable. All right, we're gonna, all right, just list them. We're going to list them first, right. then we'll come back. We'll come back. Uh, the next one is uh, not performing live. Also, not hiring a manager. And, oh, this one I love. Not making a name for yourself in your hometown or community, and networking too much. And most people never heard of networking too much. So those are, I'm not saying that that's the Bible. Well, we're going to yeah. comment on each one of these, and right. we're going to also say how it, how it really relates to a group that, you know, that, that, that we care about. Let's take a look. Here's the group that made us think about some of this stuff initially. Yeah. After Hours, Vic, in a piece that you captured, right? Yes, this is a piece that just occurred a few days ago, and it was a wonderful club, Good Hurt, West Los Angeles. There's Milan, artist, producer, entrepreneur. And Milan is responsible for bringing After Hours to us. We want you to see, because one thing about them, they're out there doing events. Yes. And they're performing live. And introducing us to their community. And showing how they operate their own talent show. That's really what it was. So you went out, there's Brandon West, the promoter. Yes. And performer, yes. artist. Yes. That's correct. Where's my After Hours crew? I don't hear my After Hours And the engine that makes this work is Milan. That pretty face is an example of a woman who, who's working to make the enterprise of what you see on stage work. She does a lot more work outside of what you're seeing here. So the example is the day after, she's on it. She's trying to introduce you to other people. I really like the energy that they had. And here's a live performance, some of it. Yes. So 
So this is one of the things that they did right is perform live. That's correct. Immediately. And communicate with you to get you out there to record this. The part I like is how they coordinated the whole thing. What was the next handshake they did after this? They would they would actually love to wear our t-shirts, pack stereo, to promote them. Wow. Okay. So okay. what is happening here? Networking. <laughs> right. Effectively. Again, this is a feature segment from the after hours. Excuse me, not the after hours, from the local zone. Victor going out in the community, he produced, directed, shot by Victor. And just so you guys know how this works, they didn't know I was coming to shoot that. It was a surprise because of I, the appreciation. They had to come on the show, be who they are, wow. and the work they've done in their video. And you was impressed by their other video. Yeah. Wow. One thing about After Hours, when they came on the show, they have... Everybody's a producer. Correct. For the most part. Correct. They're all songwriters. They're all producers. Right. All using varying degrees of technology. Many of them edit videos in some form or way, whether it's, you know, you don't have to be a, it's like us. You don't have to be a, you know, trained videographer. No. No. But they have stuff. Even though this whole performance that we captured of them was, was unique in a sense that we got a whole chance to see them. But they have a tough video out there. The production works, but one of the segments here that we're uh, addressing is not performing live. They perform live. And they're very aggressive. They, they reach out to all the contacts constantly. Anybody that's in their circle. Before the show, instead of being uh, hidden away in a room, Mario, they're all trying to meet and greet everybody. So they're sociable. So social networking works for them. Wow. Well, I enjoyed it. We wanted to show this to make it relevant. You know, as we get back to the top five mistakes indie artists, music artists make, we wanted to cite After Hours. Right. Really for uh, some of the things that they're doing correct. Doing yeah. videos, having um, music available online. They had the CD Baby download cards. That's correct. That they brought here, that, that they gave us some examples. Yes. So they got their stuff available for you to get to. They have SoundCloud. Yes. We used it live on the show to play their music yes. and also to tell everybody where they can go get stuff. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're, the, the part is, is Mario, it, it's like you discovering an artist that you really like. They don't know you're coming, right? You show up and buy the ticket, right? That's right. Wow. Everybody. So Vic went and got that. The topic for the day is the top five mistakes indie music artists make. And we actually wanted to show you this piece right here with uh, uh, After Hours, just to show you, talk about this, a, a group that was doing things correctly. Right. So again, Vic, let's, talk, let's, go, let's go back to the list. The top five mistakes indie artists, music artists make. Number one, right. waiting for a record label to discover you. <laughs> You know what? Wow. Wait till you see. Waiting. Uh, <laughs> waiting. First of all, just the concept of right. waiting. Waiting. Don't wait for anything. Everybody's waiting. Don't wait. Everybody's waiting. And we're going to go over more of the elaborate. <laughs> That's what happens when you for, wait. It's elaborate, <laughs> the elaborate support behind that statement. We can't cover it all because of the segment length of here. But when you hear, it resonates with a lot of artists. And you said most of them just really feel they're going to be discovered. Well, that's okay. Well, that's okay. Why don't you do it both things? Okay. You know, that's why I tell them. You can go for the traditional, but meantime, do some of the indie stuff to keep going. Right. Now, how about not performing live? Wow. 
We said this. First of all, you know what the issue with performing live, Vic? What is that? It requires that you rehearse to be good enough to perform live. So it's not just as simple as they don't perform live. Right. They don't rehearse a live performance. We talked about this. We even started telling people that you should shoot video right. in the studio. Yes. Record your rehearsals. We talked about getting cameras, recording the rehearsals, making DVD discs. Use it like football films, right. you know, trading films. Do that. But not just performing live, you guys, but rehearse a live performance of your track or tracks. Right. It is. And, and you know what? Add the personality to it. You know, you know, Mario, and I know this. The advent of social media and people becoming closer to the artist, the more they show more about themselves adds value to not only the art, because if they can sing their ass off, they're, they're not going well, to take go. away any point from you because you're being socially connected. There you go. Okay? There you go. There you go. Well, how about number three, though, Vic? Not hiring a manager. <laughs> I know a couple of those now, boy. Well, now we, this is where you have a, we have a little difference. It really depends how established you are. If you really have a very well-established group, if you're lucky enough, okay, let's say if you are so talented that you run across a professional established manager who has credentials and is currently managing name artists in a successful way, if you happen to run across a person like that who actually wants to manage you, that would be a unique situation, a rare situ- fairly rare situation, because usually established managers want to work with people who are already making money. Or? Who have extremely high, good potential. So here's the part that makes it interesting. You're really saying... The best case scenario is to get a manager because the the, the successful I'm artists saying, have one. I'm saying that in your early time when you're just getting going, you don't need a manager, nor you can go. you support one. There you go. In your early days, that's really my thing, in yeah. the early days. Now, once you have an established act, and some, especially with some established value, yeah. that's different. Right. Then, then I can see it. But not in the beginning and not for the vast majority, majority. of artists right. out there. You need to first get going, just figure out who you are, what you are, because right. most of you are on that level. If you're still figuring out who you are or what you are, then it's harder for me to say you need a manager. There you go. You usually don't. It's those are for artists who already know who they are, mm-hmm. who know what they are, who've been working at it. They're fairly sure of their ideas. Many of them are making money or working on a regular basis. That's when you need to do those things. So true. So All true. Right. How about not making number four, not making a name for yourself in your hometown? <laughs> you know what? Everybody says this. It says there's some things that just don't change. A lot of people say, hey, you know what? You can see me all over the world. And I remember working with somebody who always said, you know, we're all over the planet. I said, but you're talking to people right in front of you who's from Los Angeles. So let's just keep it right there for right now. It's easier to work from your home, your base roots. Why? All the advantages work for you. Because you're there for one. <laughs> right, right. You live there. It's like, it's like performing in your garage. <laughs> right. It's there and it's free. And if your family doesn't <laughs> support you and your friends don't support you, then maybe you just don't have the um factor but when you go outside of that you're really saying strangers are gonna they're gonna support you i say well you better be a unbelievable singer with a lot of things going on for you so this is an obvious you need to sit back and plant your seeds heavily in your community and here's the thing i don't think anybody can do it without performing live i think you have opportunities to do it i know most people are into production more than anything else but you need live because live sends a vibration referral credibility and i think even if you have to go so far as becoming your own promoter by that i mean you might have to get together with three or four other groups right and all of you always perform together live if you have to rent the spot see you might have to become an entrepreneur to support some of these habits. And that's the part we are encouraging. Yes, you may have to perform live. And if no one wants to hire you, or if no one wants to pay you, or there are no venues, you may have to become your own venue. And then promote that on Twitter, on the internet, do those kinds of things. Make a name for yourself in your hometown. Now, what's so good about that is if you use these modern technologies like Facebook and Twitter and the internet right. just to, to help you with building a name in your hometown, you're going to build a name in cyberspace too. Right. And it's going to be out there all over the internet, so you're going to build an international right. uh, following if you do it right. So we think that's hot. Yes. 
Now, how about number five, Vic? Networking too much. I don't know about this one, Vic. With all- I don't know that existed. That's <laughs> you- like bad publicity. <laughs> Wait a minute. Does that exist? It does. It does. There's a certain thing where they say saturation, but really what they're saying is you have to network effectively. And they said, don't say yes to everyone because not everyone is just as good, credible, and also looking in your best interest. So you may saturate yourself in the wrong community. You have to be very careful. Effective networking. Be with people or artists who are higher ups if you can. You know what the biggest problem with a lot of artists who think they're the stuff? What, what, what? Because they don't want to sit back and be second fiddle. Oh, so they won't go get with the, in other words, you. they won't get with those other artists because they feel like they're overwhelmed. Right. They're usually going to find, and the other artists, I hate to say this, Mario, it's true. I heard a story from After Hours. I won't say the name of the artist, but they ran into a, a, a situation where they had a clash from somebody from Wu-Tang Clan. I won't say who it was as it right. relates to a live performance. Yeah, they told, I remember that. So the you. part that happens here, more importantly, is, is that, Yes, yeah. you'll be threatening as you're coming up, but you also don't want to be pulling up dead Let's weight. just say the issue I have with this, Vic, is it's going to be very hard for most people to determine what actually equals too much. Easy. It's very easy. If you're going to network, Mario, would you rather network by mentoring to a lot of people who need to get up and go or a lot of people who can and come up and come well, with me? Well, that's what. <laughs> we talked about me. that. <laughs> come, come we, did, we, did, we did a lot of mentoring of people who were coming up. And that's another show. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't know about that one. It's a good, it's really good karma. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been really five... Top five mistakes that any music artists make. We took a chance to show you a group that we thought was doing it the right way, right? Yeah, After yes. hours. Knowing not that much about them and how aggressive they were, I'm going they're, they're going to be successful. You could see it. You could see if they're following everything about them shows it because they demonstrated it to us. They've done so much in the last four or five days that we're still waiting for people to do in six months. Hey, well, Vic tells you the right way. Yeah. Everybody, I'm Mario Hemsley. This has been another episode of Create Your Label. Hey, well, thank you for tuning in. All right? And we'll see you next time. Peace. I